All right, thanks for watching. And today, continuing on our vector calculus extravaganza, today I want to show you how to calculate the line integral of a vector field over a curve. And the cool thing is, you'll see, it's almost exactly the same as last time, where I calculated line integrals with respect to x and y. And again, just as usual, I will first show you how to solve the problem, and then I will tell you what that means. So, today, let's just calculate the line integral of f dotted with dr, where f is the vector field z squared, x squared, y squared, and c is the line segment from 1, 0, 0 to 4, 1, 2. And so in this case, we have a 3D vector field, but that won't stop us. Math is powerful, so. Well, first let's draw a little picture. And again, I really emphasize the use of pictures in my course. It's very, very important. Because it seems like an algebraic course, but it's actually a very geometric course. I think that's what makes the class so hard. So, we have the line segment from 1, 0, 0. So here, for example, 2, 4, 1, 2, which maybe looks like 4, 1, 2. Let's just put it here, whatever. Okay, just to give a rough idea of what's going on. And we have this segment C here. It's just a line segment connecting the two points in this direction. And again, directions are important. And essentially, and I'll talk more about that in a second, what you want to do, you want to sum up the values of those vector fields over this segment C. So, in other words, you have a bunch of arrows pointing everywhere, like boom, 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 boom. Like suppose F looks like that. And essentially, you want to sum up all those arrows, which doesn't make sense, but it turns out there's a way of making it make sense. And again, I want to emphasize the most important thing in vector calculus is just parametrizing your curve or your surface. So now let's just parametrize that line segment. So x of t, y of t, z of t. And here's the neat thing. There's actually a very systematic way of parametrizing line segments. So you put your points here, 1, 0, 0, 4, 1, 2, and then you put what I call an on and off switch. So at the beginning, at t equals to 0, you want to have the point 1, 0, 0. That's why you put 1 minus t's here. Because, again, at t equals to 0, we want this to be 1 because we want to start at 1, 0, 0. Whereas, at t equals to 0, we don't want to have 4, 1, 2, so you put t's here. And essentially, that's why I call it an on and off switch, because here you put it on, and you get 1, 0, 0, and you, here you have it off, so 0, 0, 0. But at t equals to 1, it's the opposite, you start with one, you don't want to have one zero zero, so you put zero 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 here. But here you do want to have four one two, so you put one one one. And you can simplify this, that's one minus t plus four t, so one plus three t. Here we have four t, and here we have two t. And we get it from zero to one. As I said, you want to start here and end here. By the way, 2t is such a cute word. It means parrot in Farsi. So that's why it's like a 2t, except here we have 2t. OK, and so here we have points. Turns out in vector calculus, it's better to deal with vectors. So let's just combine that. r of t is 1 plus 3t, t 
to t, and that's from t from 0 to 1. And r, not gamma, if I wrote it in cursive, no one would read it. That's why I write it that way. And the point is r of t is just a random point in, on this line segment. Okay, and the question is now, how do we calculate that line integral? And you'll see, it's, it's so beautiful. It's just this one idea, this one Chen Lu brings us uh, way forward. So it's all based on this one clever idea. So F dotted with dr, and not Franklin D. Roosevelt, that's someone else. So. Now here's the trick, well, just as before we had dx dy, the trick was to multiply and divide by dt. Well, this works here too. Take f dotted with dr, multiply top and bottom by dt, and what this becomes, well, dr over dt is r prime of t, dt. And f is just f at that point r of t. And dot is dot. And because we're talking about t, you need t values from 0 to 1. And that's, again, your formula. How cool is that? Now, um, what is f of r of t? It just means f, but with the values x of t, y of t, z of t. So remember, f was, I think, z squared, y squared, x squared. But here, what you, all you put is z of t squared, y of t squared, x of t squared. And you dot it with r prime, which is just x prime of t, y prime of t, z prime of t. dt. And once you have that, you just use x, y, and z. So z was 2t, so it's 4t squared. y was t, so t squared. And x was 1 plus 3t squared. And you dot it with all the derivatives. So the derivative of 1 plus 3t is 3. The derivative of t is 1. The derivative of 2t is 2 dt. And in general, you can have different values. And the point is, yes, you had vectors, but because of the dot product, you just have a number, and basically you just end up integrating a number. So it's zero, integral from 0 to 1. 4t squared times 3, which is 12t squared, plus t squared times 1, which is t squared, plus 2 times 1 plus 3t squared, that's 2 times 1 plus 3t squared, dt. You calculate that, so 12t squared plus t squared, it's 13t squared. You, find, you fold that out, for example, so 2 plus 2 times 3, uh, that's 6 times 2 is 12 and then 3 squared, that's 9, times 2, 18 t squared, dt. And let's see, 13 plus 18, that's 31. Oh, my h, okay. 31, okay, <laughs> plus 12 t plus 2 dt. And you get 31 q over third t cubed plus 6 t squared plus 2t from 0 to 1, and that's 31 third plus 6 plus 2, and that's 8 plus 31 third, and that's 24 plus 31 over 3, and that's 50, 55 over 3. And by the way, 55, math 55, it's the very first class Black pen and red pen took in Berkeley, and that's actually how we met. So how cool is that? 
So great, this line integral, f dotted with dr, is just 55 thirds. And what's important to understand, you get a number because in the end, you're integrating just a simple function. You're not integrating a vector. But it turns out you can still interpret it as integrating vectors. So let me give you a quick interpretation. And again, physicists, they say, oh, it's just a work done by f over a curve. But again, that doesn't mean anything to me. And I don't think you should just substitute the physics knowledge for math intuition, like some textbooks do. So what is f dotted with dr? And remember, by what I said, it's just the integral of uh, f of rt dotted with r prime t dt. Now, what is r prime t? So suppose you're at a point. Remember, r prime t, it's the tangent vector at that point. And so essentially what you're doing is at each point, suppose this is f at the point rt, at each point you're summing up those little dot products. In other words, you're summing up small numbers, and what does each number tell you? Each number tells you whether f is in the same direction as the curve or not. So, for instance, if you had a curve like there, this, and at every point, f is perpendicular to it. Then f dotted with dr, well, it's pretty much zero. Because at every point, you're summing up those little values, which is zero. But suppose f sort of flows with the curve. So suppose, for example, you had a circle like this, and f sort of moves along with the curve. Then, again, let's draw the tangent vectors. r prime, r prime r prime, r prime. Then notice f dotted with the r is huge at every point because f faces the same direction as the curve and therefore in the end, the integral of f dotted with the r should be huge. It's very positive. On the other hand, suppose the curve points like this Suppose this is r prime, but f points the other direction. Then f dotted with dr at each point, this number is negative. So f dotted with dr is negative. And so again, what is a line integral at every point? This number measures whether f faces the same direction as the curve, and you're just summing up those little measures, let's say, if you're in the same direction of the curve or not. So really, in my opinion, it is the correct analog of um, summing up vectors over the curve. Because strictly speaking, you can just sum up functions, but this is a good analog of a function. All right, so if you like this and you want to see more vector calculus extravaganza, and I promise you it's going to get even more exciting soon, uh, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.